My name is Sarah Wenner, and today I'm going to be talking about Udra and its hinterland from the Nabataean to early Byzantine periods. Udra is best known for its 4.7 hectare Roman legionary fortress, built circa AD 300 for the Legio VI Ferrata, but the site's long history began much earlier, with significant occupation beginning in the Nabataean era. The site lies approximately 12 kilometers east of Petra and receives 100 millimeters of rainfall in the average year. Jebel Ashara, a rocky and hilly area with elevations rising up to 1,600 meters above sea level, sits to the west. Further east, there are fewer mountains and hills, and elevations decrease to 1,200 meters above sea level. The first mention of Udra in historical sources dates to the 2nd century AD. Ptolemy's geography shows Adru on his 6th century map of Asia, circled in this 1578 copy. However, Udra is missing in the military list of the Notitia Dignitatum, indicating that the legion had left the fortress by the start of the third century, oh, excuse me, fifth century. A fragment of the sixth century Beersheba edict lists Adru as having paid 65 solidi in taxes, the most of all sites in the area. It is at this time that Udra became known as Augustopolis. Later sources suggest that the town continued to prosper into the early Islamic era, based on 17th century 7th century records of poll taxes. The first significant work at Udra was on an architectural survey in the late 19th century by Bruin and Domnetsky. They published the first plan of the fortress curtain wall and a number of photos. The site did not receive significant attention again until the 1980s, when it was first excavated by a British team under the direction of Alistair Killick. While most results remain unpublished, several preliminary reports provide the project's goals and some evidence. Killick began with a survey of Udra and its intermediate, in, immediate hinterland. The only published results from the survey was a claim of evidence from the Lower Paleolithic, Neolithic, Iron Age, Hellenistic, Nabataean, Late Roman, Byzantine, Early and Late Islamic, and Ottoman periods. Killick's real focus, however, was, what, was the Roman fortress itself, which he found several structures standing up to one story. Several had Christian motifs on the walls, and a broken Greek inscription was found suggesting a local Christian community, perhaps associated with a church southwest of the fortress. An Ottoman fort was built over the fortress wall in the 11th tower, perhaps because of proximity to the spring, which has likely attracted settlement throughout antiquity. The next significant research at the site was launched by Fauzi Abodana at Al Hussein bin Tala University, who conducted new excavations in 2008 within the fortress and discovered a Latin building inscription that confirmed its construction by Legio VI Ferrata, circa AD 300. I had a chance to review the material this summer, and it dates almost entirely to the early Islamic period, suggesting that clearing activity took place upon reoccupation. So this data will not be discussed further. Abu Dana also conducted a survey for his 2006 dissertation to examine the notion that a different society existed on the marginal areas between the agricultural region to the west of Petra and the more arid region, region for, further east. Abu Dana took GPS points of the roads, channels, and walls and collected pottery shards within a 700 square kilometer area, divided into small grid sections and systematically covered with a vehicle and occasionally on foot. He found that the region reflected a long history of human activity from prehistory to the 19th century, with periods of intensity in the first two centuries AD. He argued that the Roman annexation of Nabataea in AD 106 did not significantly affect the intensity of settlement initially, but that settlement gradually decreased through the Roman period, circa AD 106 to 324. But settlement resurged at the start of the early Byzantine period, although not in the same way as it had in the Nabataean period. Period. In 2011, Abu Dana formed a Dutch Jordanian survey with Mark Driesen at Leiden University to better understand the rural development and major societal transformations of the Udra region in antiquity, especially in relation to the major city at Petra. Emphasis was placed on the examination of agricultural intensification, water management, caravan routes, and communication and security networks. The survey covers 48 square kilometers surrounding the Udra. The landscape was subdivided into units called tracks, distinguished by topographic and geomorphic features. Teams surveyed tracks through both extensive and intensive surveys. They collected ceramic and other material culture, but only began collecting methodologically in 2014. 
collection complemented non-destructive exploration methods, such as ground-penetrating radar and magnometry. Optically stimul stimulated luminescent samples of mortar, plaster, and soil date crucial structures. In 2014, the team surveyed four unique eras intensively with a goal of 100% collection. Two large circular structures, the purpose of which is still unclear, were intensively surveyed, as was a long and narrow strip south of the fortress as a control group. The final intensive survey occurred at what has been named an extra legum settlement, one lega or 2.2 kilometers west of the fortress. Because of time limitations, this paper is a chronological review of the extra legum settlement. The following labels will be used to describe major chronological periods of settlement. These labels do not refer in any way to cultural identity, but rather major periods in the area's history. Nabataean era refers to material dating circa 63 BC through AD 106. The phrase Roman era refers to material dating circa AD 106 to 324. And early Byzantine refers to material dating circa 324 to 500. Obviously, the ceramics did not necessarily change at these transitions, a common problem for surveyors in the region, especially distinguishing between 1st and 2nd century material. The extra legume settlement was divided into 138 20 by 20 meter squares. Over 1,100 classical era diagnostic sherds were collected and identified. About 40% of these date to the Nabataean period before the Roman annexation of Nabataea. The majority of these were in Petra courseware, which is unsurprising given Udra's proximity to the kilns in Wadi Musa. However, this corpus did contain six sherds of Karak ware imported from the north. Almost 30% of the Nabataean period sherds were fine ware, semi fine ware, or painted fine ware, suggesting that the region did not just witness agricultural use, but also a significant amount of domestic use, as inhabitants likely lived near their fields. This assessment agrees with the site's visible architecture, which includes several domestic structures, agricultural fields, and a threshing floor. Most Nabataean pottery dates to the mid to late 1st century AD, suggesting that the Udra region experienced a settlement explosion at approximately the same time as neighboring regions such as Jebel Ashara, Bir Madkor, Wadi Musa, Wadi Slaysal, and Umratan. However, nine shirts from the Udra survey, including cooking pots, and Nabataean painted fineware suggests earlier settlement. Pamela Koulianos, the ceramicist for the Petra Garden and Pool Complex, dated these cooking pots to the first century BC, and S. Thomas Parker has argued that this form disappears entirely by 30 BC based on its virtual absence from Aqab, uh, or, excuse me, Aqaba, founded around that time. The Nabataean painted fineware shards are also quite diagnostic and date from the first half of the second half of the first century BC through the early first century AD. The intensive survey also yielded a western sigillata bull rim of the first century AD. This is a significant find as western sigillata is rare even in Petra itself. The Roman port at Isla yielded none. Eastern sigillata and Shandarli ware vessels were identified from the Udra survey, but I cannot date them more tightly than the first and second centuries AD. These are rare at hinterland sites, but more common at Petra and elsewhere in the Nabataean kingdom. Their presence in the hinterland of Udra suggests a vibrant, thriving community with far-flung trade connections to the wider Roman Empire. Jars were the best represented 1st century AD form, in particular large storage jars with large and wide handles, often about the size of a hand, with numerous ridges on the top, perhaps made by fingers. Other common finds from the, this period include carinated bowls with ring bases, often in Petra courseware, triangular rim cooking pots, and rolled rim cups. Together, this collection of storage, utilitarian, and serving ware suggests a region which witnessed primarily domestic and agricultural use. Supplies may have been shipped from Petra in the previously mentioned storage jars, commonly found on Petra excavations, including Azantor and the Obadash Chapel. These might have then carried grain back to Petra or have been reused on the hinterland site. Although the Udra region receives less rain than the hinterland immediately surrounding Petra, it is, significant, is sufficient to grow grain and the soil is rich. Nabataean era inhabitants likely cultivated grain and other products to support Petra, suggesting less of a parasitic relationship but one which mutually benefited both regions. A number of forms, approximately 22%, date from the 1st century into the 2nd century AD, and therefore blur the transition between Nabataean and Roman eras. 
However, Nabataean painted fine wear shirts help us to clarify this transition. 46 shirts of Decor Phase 3B were identified, dating to circa AD 70 to 100, in comparison with 8 shirts of Decor Phase 3C, dating to circa AD 100 to 150. At the Petra North Ridge project, Decor Phase 3B almost immediately disappears when Decor Phase 3C emerges, during or after the annexation, and the amount of 3C is comparable with 3B. While the exact year of Decor Phase 3C's emergence remains obscure best based on my test of the typology, it is certainly the phase associated with the first half century in the Roman era in Petra in its immediate hinterland. The extra legum settlement had no Decor Phase 4 shards. This phase is an exceptionally common at Petra but does begin by the start of the 3rd century. I identified an additional 145 Roman era shards, approximately 14% of the total corpus from the extra legum settlement. By comparing data from Petra's North Ridge with that from Udra, a marked decrease in settlement after the Roman annexation is suggested. While the extra legum settlement was not abandoned, it seems to have been less intensively occupied. The most common forms include jars, which comprise the majority of Roman era forms. Interestingly, there is now a greater portion of cooking vessels. They comprise 40% of all Roman period forms, compared to only 17% in the Nabataean era. It is tempting to interpret this dramatic change in percentage as possible evidence for change in land use. Bir Madkor and Umrantan, both sites used for security purposes, have less domestic evidence during this period. The extra legum settlement could have experienced the opposite phenomenon. However, I do not believe this is the case. Likely, the increase in cooking wares is skewed by the number of cooking bowls, which can date to the very end of the first century AD. The decrease in storage and shipping vessels may be a result of repackaging activities occurring off-site. Trade certainly remained significant for Petra during this period, which witnessed the construction of a major Roman road between AD 111 and 114. Nevertheless, an apparent decline in settlement is suggested by a dramatic decrease in total shard numbers during the Roman period, and this is surprising. Security should have increased because of the Roman military presence, and, as just mentioned, the newly constructed Via Nova Traiana might have facilitated increased trade. However, David Graff's research has reaffirmed that the Via Nova Traiana did not run through Petra, or did not run through Udra, but through Petra, the road thought by some scholars to be Udra's section of the Via Nova Traiana was simply a secondary road. Another possible explanation is climate change. Scholars have suggested the possibility of a drier climate in the second and third centuries, which could have reduced agricultural po productivity. As the region became drier, settlements should have concentrated in regions with the most water sources. But Udra had a copious perennial spring, which should have continued to attract a settlement through the Roman period. Additionally, the Jebel Ashara range to the west, which received the most rainfall in the region, was virtually abandoned. Laurent Tolbeck, who directed the Jebel Ashara survey, argues that the abandonment could have been the result of an intensive use in the Nabataean period, causing soil exhaustion and erosion. This might partially explain the widespread abandonment even at Udra. Likely, it was a combination of soil exhaustion, drier climate, and changes wrought by the Roman presence during and after the Roman annexation. The extra legum survey area witnessed some minimal resurgence between 5 and 10 percent in the early Byzantine period. Special finds from this period include two Carrick ware jars and a class 46 amphora shard from Palestine of the 5th and 6th centuries. Amphora shards are a rare find at Udra overall, as only 15 have been identified from four survey seasons. With these exceptions, all other early Byzantine shards are local to the region, possibly even produced at Udra itself. Killick indicated that he had identified a ceramic kiln just outside the fortress, apparently at the fortress's southern wall. As Killick never published the kiln or its contents, this is impossible to confirm. However, the Udra survey has identified several kiln wasters. Many of these were found near the possible kiln site, but another group of 11 wasters was identified in a 2013 field system survey. All of these were early Byzantine in date. The 2014 intensive control survey also recovered an early Byzantine cooking pot kiln waster. 
Additional evidence for local production in Udra itself is suggested by a slight change in fabric. Udra's ceramics from this period have many more inclusions than in previous periods. Early Byzantine material from Petra does not have near the same amount of inclusions. Ceramics samples from Udra are now undergoing analysis in Leiden. The percentage of cooking, storage, transport, and serving vessels remained fairly stable in the Roman to early Byzantine transition. Jars were the most common find, usually thicker, debased, and often with a folded or triangular rim. Most cooking pots has evolved directly from their triangular rim predecessors, but a number had rounded and inverted rims, typical of Petra's early Byzantine cooking wares. Bowls were the third most dominant form, having remained particularly steady from the Nabataean through the Byzantine period. The extra legum survey yielded no early Byzantine fineware, but there were seven ARS sherds recovered from elsewhere in 2014, including two Hayes Forms 59B, dated circa 320 to 420, and one Hayes Form 69, mid 5th century. The paucity of early Byzantine material is rather surprising given the construction of the fortress near the beginning of this period. Even outside the intensive survey area, the survey's early Byzantine material was lower than expected and represents only a fraction more sherds than the Roman area material. This pattern parallels Abu Dana's earlier survey. The Brown survey, the Finnish Jebel Harun survey, and the Jebel Ashara survey have reported little evidence of an early Byzantine period. On the other hand, the Unratan survey yielded evidence of an increase in early Byzantine period occupation, but settlement likely terminated at the 363 earthquake. Many areas in Petra reflect a similar abandonment after 363, such as the Petra Garden and Pool Complex, Kasser el Bint, Zantur, which was reoccupied for a short time later, and the domestic structures along North Ridge. But the Udre survey produced no such evidence of abandonment after 363, and based on historical sources, it seems that the re region continued to prosper. However, the Petra papyri do reference an uninhibited hamlet within the territorium of Augustopolis or Udra, coupled with the papyri's general implication that land was concentrated into fewer hands. Paula Kuki explained this phenomenon by arguing that early Byzantine pottery simply may have not survived as well in the archaeological record, as it seems less durable than the Nabataean era sherds. I also noticed that the early Byzantine ceramics were more, more likely to crumble in my hand and often appeared more worn than the Nabataean shards, but I do not think this explains the unexpected dearth of Byzantine material. Instead, during the early Byzantine period, settlement concentrated in certain areas, especially near the fortress, and it remained so concentrated until the beginning of the Islamic period in the 7th century. This explanation is supported by both the Petra papyri and numerous surveys of Petra's hinterland. Based on evidence from the Udra 2014 intensive survey, I postulate that this region, although offering significantly less rainfall than the region around Petra, attracted intensive settlement during the first century AD after sporadic earlier activity. Settlement seems to have exploded throughout Petra's hinterland during the first century AD as evidenced by regional surveys. Udra provide proved to be no exception as the rainfall, minimal though it was in comparison with the regions further west, allowed sufficient agriculture to support the population. In the Roman period, settlement decreased everywhere, including Udra. When some researchers have argued that the region entered a drier period in the 2nd and 3rd centuries. While this might explain a decrease in settlements around Udra, especially as the region was already drier than it was to the west, it does not explain the region-wide trend. Udra did recover some of its population during the early Byzantine period to some degree, but not as much as one would expect given the evidence from the Beersheba Edict and early Islamic sources. Hopefully future fieldwork will reveal more about the nature of Udra's Byzantine settlement.